What's going on guys? Welcome back to Everyday Struggle in Desk Academics and Wayno here. Another beautiful day in New York City. How are you guys doing? What up? I feel good. I feel mad good. What's up with you? I don't know. I just feel really good. So what's this nigga smoking, bro? Like, Why do I have to be smoking to feel good? <laughs> Damn. <laughs> It's a drug-free <laughs> environment, academics. This feels Listen, good. Man, I, I just, before we got on air, I thought I was tweaking. I thought I thought uh, Wayne would join the wave of tattooing portraits of of just random people on themselves. And um, then I found out it was a long-time tattoo. Wrong, yeah. I had this for a long time. It's the Joker. It's uh, the Heath Ledger Joker. I was originally going to do, like, all my favorite villains on one leg, but then I was like, nah. Wow. I thought you were doing the NBA Youngboy and the NLE Chopper. My nigga. They crazy. I'm old enough to be NBA Youngboy and NLE Chopper's pops. Like, cool out. Other people do it, too. But no. Whatever. Nah. Whatever. <laughs> what are you up to? Uh, me, nothing. Got a Jordan's out I'm just, just here working. Yeah, yeah. Um, thanks for noticing, I guess. I don't rock Jordans, I ain't gonna lie. Yeah, I know, I get it. So I was just waiting for the snarky <laughs> comment that was gonna follow that bullshit. He said Jordan. that like he rocks something better than Jordans. Nah, he better than Jordans. Yes, you know, da, he da, has da, that da, one da. pair of uh, Gucci sneakers that we hear about all the time. Right. Nah, J J Jordan ain't really for the betterment of black people, so I had to stay black. Yo, I think I think the Megatron song has me. Yeah, you're gonna have it in my Jesus head. Jesus Christ, stop. that little challenge that Nicki got got you already? No, nah, it's just that, that, but I, that's, nah, that's, it's a challenge that I got people. I can't get that shit out of my head, Nah, yeah. it's a challenge that got people. Like, people are really, like, it's infectious enough that mm -hmm. it's, that's programming. I'm programmed, yo. Yeah. <laughs> then from the, bruh, that, 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 I can't another, stop another it. line that, other than the rat that, that, that. Come on, we're not gonna do that today, all right? <laughs> we're not gonna do that today. No shade at all, none. All right, well, we're going to start uh, with an update on uh, Rocky. Uh, so yesterday we mentioned that ASAP Rocky is being held in solitary confinement in Sweden. Um, he's being allowed no calls or visitors for two weeks, and he's facing up to six years in prison over a fight. So according to a local French newspaper, please excuse my non-French accent, Agents France Press, uh, Sweden's Supreme Court has rejected Rocky's appeal for releasing that they found no reason to review his case. Uh, so this stemmed from a street fight between Rocky, his crew, and two men back on June 30th. And we'll actually show you a little bit of the footage where you hear him and his security guard over and over telling the guys to please stop following them that they don't want any issues. Take a look. Listen, listen, listen. We don't want to fight y'all. We're not trying to go to jail. My head's one. My head's one. He's fucking look, look, you, my head's You hit him with it. I want my head's one. I understand you hit, him you hit him with it. Bro. Just for the cameras, we don't want no problems with these boys. They keep following us. Look at them. They keep following us. So tell him to leave us alone. Go somewhere, go that way, bro, before you get hurt. We don't want to hurt y'all. Go that way, bro. Thank you, sweetie. All right, so they're saying for now Rocky's going to have to remain in custody until police finish their investigation, although there's a lot of evidence here. So following this update, Tyler, the creator, got on Twitter to say he's no longer going to Sweden. Schoolboy Q said he's boycotting. Yachty's not doing it either. And, um, you know, T.I. joined in as well, said they're officially outside of the culture. Um, TMZ also reported that Rocky's been held in a jail where he has to reportedly sleep on yoga mats, no blankets, that the food, water, not clean and not edible. So whenever we talk about stuff like this year, we talk about de-escalation, right? Did someone actually try to de-escalate you see both rocky and his security doing it um in this video i don't know what do you guys think yo what's crazy is it's like all right you know the first video we saw you just see like rocky fighting like that's the one that went viral right mm -hmm. but after seeing this this adds a lot more context to it also like i know his security guards a dude named timmy's from harlem very respected and for him to get hit in his head for me to know him and him to get hit in his head and him to do nothing they really did not want no problems you know what i mean and and, and that's really big but um, they de-escalated it. Like I watched the, uh, like a longer video. They was doing that for like a good two minutes yeah. of them just telling them to chill. They asked other people that might have spoke a language that they understood. Like, yo, could you tell them to cool out? And they kept following them, kept following them, kept following them. So at what point is it cool to defend yourself? I know like probably laws is different in other countries and shit. But like, at what point is it cool to defend yourself? Because right. they had already attacked them. You know what I mean? So it, it's just unfortunate to see what Rocky's going through. Yeah, I'm, I'm really curious about the investigation so far. Like, who are they speaking to? Are they looking at other footage? Does this not count as any sort of proof? Um, the, the mere fact that they said that they don't find a reason to really, like, appeal or whatever shows that whatever laws they got over there, like, kind of justifies what they're doing, which, again, goes back to what I was saying yesterday. I got to stay ass in the United States, man. I don't know. Y'all tweaking. But, by the way, I agree with all them rappers who said no more Sweden. Like, the fuck we doing over there anyway? You feel me? Uh, now, I get it, like, you go over to do rap shows and shit, but I've been seeing way too many times these celebrities, these rappers, 
just overseas doing some goofy shit. Like, y'all really not from there. The culture don't really accept y'all. Don't ever forget that you're black. And, you know, these are uh, unfortunately very harsh and unfortunate reminders. Now, from what I'm seeing with these videos, like, th this can't be the whole story. Because I just can't see somebody defending themselves in, in what seems, at least when you see this video, mm -hmm. as a classic, just like self defense video. And we're trying to de escalate, stop, go away, please stop. Now, if you continue to approach, yes, yeah, something is going to happen. I just can't see why he's locked up over that, which, again, um, I hate to, like, I've learned my lesson based on other cases where I'm making crazy judgments over just different clips. Yeah. So I want to find out more because, like, if they got an investigation, like, again, if I was investigating this shit and I seen both videos, yeah. there's nothing much really to talk about. I'm wondering what else must have occurred that's holding him in jail. Regardless, it, it, it seems like, you know, um, beyond just the incident, you know what I mean? He might be getting some of his human rights violated. Absolutely. And, of course, him being a rapper and also him being in that country, I don't think they're doing, doing him any favors as well. Where was um, Freddie Gibbs at when his situation happened? Was that Austria? <laughs> I know he was somewhere, but the thing with Freddie Gibbs, yeah, he wasn't even, should, yeah. but that's what I'm saying, with Freddie Gibbs, he wasn't even, he never saw the girl that alleged something or whatever the case may be. He never even met her, nothing. He was in a whole nother room. And how long was he locked up? Yeah, like half a year or something? That was shit? in Austria. It said in French and Austrian jails. And, and, and how long, he, he was locked up for like six to eight months or something like that. Something crazy, right? Mm -hmm. And he wasn't even in the vicinity. It's right. like, I, I I definitely agree with Act on the fact that like, but I, it's but there's a funny the thing. Place, it's like, right? yeah, it's like you the have you have a fan base overseas. It's not fair to your fans, and also you're collecting big checks. So you're just gonna say, "Cool, I'm not yeah, going not to Europe right. at all. I'm not traveling. That sucks. Yeah. That yeah. shouldn't be the well, the case." Well, I mean, I think when, when I say that though, it kind of pertains to A7 because like, yo, the nigga don't really be in the states. He really seems to enjoy living or having a residence I mean, he's overseas. In, he's in fashion heavy. You know what I mean? He's in fashion heavy, and it's like, I mean, I don't know what he was there for, but. He was living like he was living in London for a while, from what I understood. He like he's always been since the beginning of his career. He's always been going out there. So I I could understand why he's out there, but for defending yourself, like how many times can you watch the? If you see what happened and you see what's happening prior, it's like how do you keep him in jail anywhere? Right. Like any fucking where. And, and by the way, you know like. Um... I don't like to even speak down on Sweden. I don't even know no Swedish niggas to keep it true. But I don't even want to speak down in a country like they're they're just like either anti-black or just they got just some fucked up shit. Sweden going and on. Switzerland is two different places. Um, yeah. right. But I would definitely like to speak to someone like from that culture, from that country, right. to see their take on it. Because I know like I know we look at things from the lens of we're from the United States and this house should go down here. But a lot of different countries, based on how their culture is, based on how their laws is, they really don't give two fucks about what we got going on over here or our perception. Yeah. So, you know, like, like shit, like, for example, um, like, there's certain things that's on the laws, like, for example, in Jamaica. We, they don't give two fucks about the United States and how we think. Nah, they don't care about that because they have their own culture. Yeah. So, again, I don't know if this plays a part into it, but I would like to talk to one of the natives there. So now. we need to know what's good with the self-defense laws in Sweden, basically. Yeah, because yeah, you okay. can't tell me that nobody out there is not having no type of altercations. Right. You know what I mean? Like, and that's where impossible. are those guys? I haven't seen anything in the reports about if they're also in solitary. Yeah, I haven't seen... We haven't heard nothing about them at all. Like, so the, the two kids? Yeah. Oh. Uh, I'm surprised they're not there popped up online cloud chasing. Yeah, I'm surprised at that, too. <laughs> but it's like... I, I don't know, yo. That This shit is just messy. It, and it, it's messed up. You know what I mean, it's, it's really messed up that he's being held in these fucked up conditions, and they're like saying that he's facing six years already. Like, I don't know. I don't know what he. We, but do we know what he's even charged with? It's gonna be some sort of assault, it seems. But yeah, if we don't know anything about the laws, all right. If we have any um, viewers from Sweden, if you guys have information, maybe it'd be cool if you could let us know a little bit, or we'll do some research as well because <laughs> I don't want to speculate. And you know what I was also I thinking? Like, is it? Is he locked up because of what happened there, or he's locked up because he's charged with anything so they, and he's a foreigner? Right, so this hasn't said that they're charged. It says he's in custody while they're investigating. But why in solitary confinement while you're well, conducting well, it an investigation? Like if, if, I say, say he's, you're not, from, you're not a Swedish uh, citizen, 
Like, just like, hey, if we lock up niggas, I mean, we have different laws as it relates to immigrants, but mm -hmm. we lock up another nigga from another country who did some shit. Again, we may treat them a little bit more humanely, but in, in other countries, they might have certain protocols where, like, yeah, we're not going to send you to the county jail, wherever that is. No, you're an immigrant. You don't ain't supposed to be here, really. Like, you're here for whatever. They're going to treat Damn, you Damn, but he's different. legally in the country, yeah, though. Like you, it's not well, like he's... No, 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 I, I'm, I'm not... I understand condoning. your point, though, saying, but yeah, they're... That in every country, when they arrest people who are immigrants as opposed to the citizens, right, the they, they they usually have an immigration way of dealing with, um, like, that arrest, right? You get me? Like, which means it might be that. In some yeah, countries, harsh. I, I mean, I'm just saying, like, if, if that shit was, if that shit happened here with somebody that wasn't from here, they'd have been in the bookings for a day or two. They'd have been out by now. You know what I mean? Like, as if you're here legally, you they'd have been out by now. We got to send Kim Kardashian over there to get him out. I ain't gonna lie. All right, academics. All right. Man, you get niggas out. sending love to Rocky and hope this gets resolved. We'll see if we could like uh, dig up some some more information. All right, so on today's segment for the Come Up, Stay Up, we're trying to highlight the pressures that artists deal with after achieving major success early in their careers. So, for example, someone like a Lil Nas X having a breakout hit or a Bryson Tiller having like a great debut album. What do you guys think are the biggest challenges that they face afterwards? So it's a few things, right? It could be sometimes signing the right record deal, having the follow-up hit, uh, having a great sophomore album, stuff like that. I think the pressure that artists have is like really what they put on themselves, you know? Um, hmm. Like, uh, you don't think he puts pressure on people? Absolutely, he puts pressure on niggas all the time. But I'm just saying, it's like, I think a lot of... Uh, I'm saying, not you specifically, but I don't know if it's always yeah, the artist. I feel like the public puts a lot of expectations on people, too. Well, what I was going to say flopping. What you mean? What, what I was going to say is, is like, all right, you know, um, like how and Russ, you know, the friend of the show, mm -hmm. um, how he says about uh, how artists, when, they're, when their mixtape doesn't do as good, it's really an album, but when it doesn't do as good, they say, oh, it was just a mixtape, so it's not taken as seri seriously. Where I feel like if you, if you establish that it's an album, whether you do big sales or not, at least people know that you're you're putting out music for them to receive a certain type of way. When you do it, you say, oh, it's just a mixtape, then it's like, okay, if it doesn't reach a certain plateau, then it's like, oh, no, nah, I wasn't that serious. You know, let's try again. But these shits, they spend an album money on them. They spend an album money to promote them. But people call it an EP or a mixtape or all these other terms just so that people don't take the shit too serious. But then if it, if it blows up, if a mixtape does blow up, then everybody's looking for you to outdo your mixtape on your album, mm -hmm. you know. So um, people put a lot of ex uh, unfair expectations on themselves as well, just with the terms of how they call their projects. Yeah, I mean, McConan is someone we've talked about a lot recently, right? Because he said he feels like he's not getting enough love, but of course he had a breakout hit, and then he couldn't really duplicate that success. He had two songs. Yeah, but but, but you know, like the, the uncomfortable truth is that a lot of these things, like they ain't that talented to keep it true, like. They get this light in the bottle, they get a, a big hit, and they either try to remake the same song over and over again, or they just can't come up with another big hit. Like, it takes a lot of talent to, to continually make a hit. A hit is usually like a one-on-one. -on -one. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. shit, look at Pump. Pump has tried to make Gucci Gang like 10 times. You Buckle think up. a hit is a one-on-one? -on -one? Like, a hit is usually unique. Like, when you, when you hear, like, Compared to most more of these More recently. Things, more, I say more and more recent artists is, it, is, is one on one. For, for most artists that break out with a hit, that hit is usually um, infectious. I, when I say one on one, I'm not saying it's like the most unique shit in the world, but it's. I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. No, 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 it's, no, it's hard to explain. It's hard to explain. But like, a hit, it does something for you. And that breakout hit, you'll never get again for most artists. It takes it takes an incredible amount of talent to do it again. Well, I mean, most of these other most artists, like like say Pump, like you get that success, it's a high. You're trying to get it back, mm -hmm. you never really get it back. Well, I think we gotta stop trying to use him as a bar for like a person who made a hit that didn't make another hit because it's, it's tons of artists that that have made continuous Are hit records. Any artist that had a breakout hit? Designer. Someone you talk well, about who had a big, but then he had a few good songs afterwards. So you feel like it's just because he couldn't recreate that hit? Or is it because he didn't put out a strong body of work afterwards? Or I liked his body of did work. he have enough label support? You did like his project. 
I blame it a little bit on the label, but also like he couldn't replicate that. And also but, the third thing, he was very similar to the future. But see, the thing, the, but and this is another conversation mm -hmm. to have, and we always have this is like with a designer, you know how much shit happened for that? Yo, designer's only 21 years old. Mm -hmm. Like that, he got a major hit. He went diamond at 18 years old. Like you think he's he's worrying about replicating a hit song when he's going out every night and doing one song 10 times and collecting all types of money? No, so I don't think that every time it's not that they don't have the talent level, it's just that certain things happen too fast for certain people. A lot of artists that you see today, these motherfuckers is getting four million and five million dollar deals and then you don't hear from them eight months later. And, 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 and that's why I said we gotta stop using them as the bar because if we look at like just hip hop and just R&B or just music over time, the artists that we love the most have had the talent and the creativity to continuously make hits. Hmm. I mean, to, to, to make hits and keep making hits. That's why I, I think, like, if you have a breakout hit, that's cool, but, like, there's tons of artists that you could use as examples that had big hit records that came with more. Fucking Run It by Chris Brown was a breakout hit. Hmm. He's still here, what, 15 years later, still performing, and he's only 30, 31 years old? That's the difference between Chris Brown and the rest of these niggas. Yeah, but I'm just saying we got to stop using, like, Pump as like the only person. No, we no, use no, 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 no. I just use like most of these niggas. Like we, we usually find out about a lot of these rappers off that one hit, and then ugly guy. We find out, find about you off that one hit, and then we're then waiting to see the next. YK Osiris. Find about you on that one hit. We're waiting to see the next, and that's usually where it is. And again, you 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 mentioned Chris Brown, but and by the way, Chris Brown, we, we ain't even talk about. It, I mean, he's I one. Of, he's a generational talent. You know, Chris Browns don't fall off trees. Exactly. You know I mean? Which I, I just want to say, salute to Chris Brown with Indigo. That's just number one again. Mm -hmm. But, um, like, yeah, it's generational talent. Like the rest of these guys, it, it's not the same. What I would say about designer and, and the point you're making and how young he is, I do think there is a thing about not being mature enough to handle success. I, we've seen it with Chief Keef. Like Chief Keef got hot. Really popping at 16. Chief Keef's like 22 now, and Chief Keef that's crazy. seems a little bit wow. of a former. It's almost it's a 22? 10 year career. Yeah. Like, that's crazy. And, and, um, he had to be 23 going to 24. He's 22. No, no, I think because he was 16. He was like 16, 15. Wow. When Damn, he came yo. In. That was 2012. Yeah. And eight years later, he's like 22, maybe 23. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I think, I think the maturity level probably affected him, designer. Mm. You get me? Of course, with other things. There's matter of things, label issues, interscope. But I I think that's some of the issues that some of these artists go through after your first hit to sustain all the way till you get another hit. Because sometimes it doesn't happen instantly. Right. It takes a while and hey, we see if you can't get it, like niggas usually just say you watch that. But you always say that, um, and it's a good point, that having the core fan base that will support you when you don't have the hits matter. Someone like Keith, he definitely has a very yeah. loyal fan yeah. base, right? Yeah. So that buys you a lot of time. Of course. Well, that's, again, that's how I look at the game. Mm -hmm. At least for the artists that are mainstream. If you're mainstream and you do care about getting hits once in a while, you get a hit and then you hopefully feed your core and your core keeps you until you get another hit. Well, I think that, the, I mean, every artist, I don't care how, like, what type of artist you are, everybody would love to have a hit record. You know what I mean? Because a hit record just makes your life better. <laughs> I mean, you could pay your bills a lot easier when you got a hit record. But it's like... I, like when you look at J. Cole, right, and he's another generational talent, but when you look at J. Cole and remember when he when he put out like the warm up and everything, everybody was looking for like who that, everybody, like he even said that he thought who that was going to be his shit. Yeah. I think he had to stop, sometimes you got to stop chasing the hit and just really more emphasize into your music and, and, and what you're trying to do and that, you'll find the hits within that because if you, like I said, if you go to a J. Cole show and he performs on them songs, you'd be like, God damn, this thing got a ton of hit records. Mm -hmm. But he did it within the body of work as opposed to just trying to be a, all right, let me just make this one song, let me make this one song, let me make this one song. I think it depends on the type of artist you are, though. Because um, I think YB and Cordae, I don't think he'll be a hit maker, honestly. But do I think he'll have solid body of works and maybe hits come in between um, those projects or like those efforts? Yeah. And I think fans and, and people who support him, you're already conditioned. And he hasn't put out that many songs, but you're conditioned to think that because of the type of artist he is. Some other artists, you know, like most of these artists where we usually like, it's every two weeks we're like, who? And it's because <laughs> they're, they're on the charts or they're doing crazy streams It's because they actually have a song. They, we're getting introduced to them with a hit as opposed to these other guys. Like with Cole, I don't think we were introduced to him with a hit. Yeah. We were introduced to him with a bunch of dope music.
You know, it's crazy because all these artists, they're going and like they might have one hit record that they make a couple million off of and their label makes like 50 or 60 million dollars off of that hit record that they made a cu like a couple million off of. And they have no idea. That's why they sign in all these big, stupid ass bad deals. But then that's part of the problem too. Absolutely. It, it, right? In the breakout, like then you get caught up in bad deals and that could tank your career too. I just I just think that like labels is giving kids way too much money. Like they like you don't have to do shit. It's almost like you know how like we need a fucking lockout, like how the NBA had. <laughs> For real. Like when when KG, they gave him $126 million. Like everybody in the NBA was like, yo, this kid ain't even won a fucking championship. You give him $126 million, we need to rethink how we giving out this money. Mm -hmm. The, the, these labels is giving out five, four million and five million, eight million dollar deals off of one or two songs, and then these kids is done in, a, in less than a year. Sound like you're counting your own point though, because what? if it's like the owners and, and and the players, if they making sixty, like I know it, that they're still grossly overpaid, but shit, if the label making sixty, you gotta throw the kid like five. I, I know, but right, yeah, but the, the problem the problem with that is is that like like I think that's where money, art development comes. Uh, people equate like money to to intelligence like like it, it could be the dumbest motherfucker on your block and this and i'm not trying to down artists but a lot of them don't have a certain level of intelligence and they come into a lot of money mm -hmm. and then they think that they're smarter than everybody now they're the person that tells everybody what to do just because they have money but they run out of it fast too you know what i mean it's like when you, it's like a kid getting a lawsuit like why the fuck would you give a kid a 25 million dollar lawsuit at 18. Just because he's 18? At 18, so you're telling me in, from a kid being like, let's say something happened at 10 years old, at eight years, they can mat, they can fucking understand having $25 million? And it's just like that with labels. Like, they'll just throw you all this money and you make all these bad decisions and they'll get your, get your fucking, like, what they need and then you're done. We gotta have a fucking music lockout. Hmm. For I mean, <laughs> like, artist development has definitely changed, I feel like, over the past decade. It feels almost non-existent, but for you, when you're like looking for new talent or signing new talent, what's that process like? So a kid like, who's never seen like a big check in his life yeah. getting a mega check, like what kind of conversations do you have to have with him? Like for me, like honestly, with, with, with me looking for, for new artists, like I don't, I'm not a numbers guy. Like, you know what I mean? You get all this like, but you're a good research. life advice guy, you know what I mean? Yeah, but I, I mean, what I mean by numbers, like, you know, it, this is what they do. They sit on computers all day and they look at shit that's spiking and say, oh, sign that or find that or do this. You might meet somebody and they're an asshole or like, they, you don't really want to build with them. I'm, I'm more into like building from the ground up process because at least like if you're building from a ground up process and you don't take a $5 million deal or $1 million deal, but you, you, you grow to getting that type of money, I think you'll just maintain it lo longer as opposed to you being a young kid in high school or just getting to college or whatever the case may be, being in that age group, and then somebody throws like this crazy amount of money on you, and then now after you've had that success, like Ax said, now you're trying to outdo yourself. Mm -hmm. Like Lil Pump, like you know what I mean? Like now he's trying to outdo Gucci Gain and he hasn't, so now he's doing all types of crazy shit on the gram just, just so he could get likes or looks or whatever the case may be. It's not like, he might feel some pressure that he's not talking about and that shit leads to drugs and it leads to all types of shit. And, if nobody gives a fuck about the human being at the end of the day, then why are we even giving these human beings opportunities? Wow. You know, pressure also builds from some of these people really just dropping a ball. Like, we've seen a bunch of artists drop the ball, or you're seeing them, like, for example, Lil Nas X just dropped Old Town Road. I think his label and him personally, they're, they're working exactly on the pace of trying not to drop the ball. For example, not relying on your, your, your big song too long mm -hmm. without realizing that this will come and pass. You need to continue. So he's already pushing an EP, right? Mm -hmm. Like for people like Designer, for people like um, Young M.A., right? That's, that's the mistake that they um, made, that not putting out an EP around the time that they exactly. dropped. Exactly. They dropped the ball a little bit. Shit. I know, and again, this is a personal friend of mine. Um, so like, ugly guy, like, shit, I told him, yo, maybe you should have... You know, like when he first put out his song, maybe you should have got got some assistance from label at that point. Mm -hmm. You know, um, there is there is that period where you feel you're good, so you think you're doing nothing. But to be honest, like y you're dropping the ball, yep. and I think like Young Ma, I look at how her career went. I think shit, she could have signed, or she could have like pushed maybe in more other music. Um, could have maybe her career could have been a little bit different right now. Yeah. I mean, that's why, I like, um, I know we're going a little long on this, but I'll say this in closing. Like, that's why I like, like, artists like West Side Gun and mm -hmm. Conway and them because, like, they know exactly who they are and they know, like, they use, they use their music as, like, tools to push so many other things. So they, they make money. Like, West Side Gun probably making just as much money as your favorite rapper and he don't have a hit record on the radio. 
but he's doing it his way. So I, I think a lot of times with these artists, they don't even know who they want to be. I think the good thing about Lil Nas X is, <clears throat> excuse me, he knows exactly who he wants to be. Yeah. Like, I don't look at him as like, he trying to be something that he's not. And, and that's, the, that's the problem that happens with a lot of these artists. It's like, when you, you see how many of these artists you see, act, and I'm, I'm pretty sure you get this all the time, uh, they come out and they got this crazy song, they talking all this shit, and it, it's a hundred people saying, that kid wasn't acting like that last year. <laughs> he, he wasn't doing none of that shit. Now you're trying to live up to the certain standard of what you feel like people want to see from you because they're accepting your record, and then your next record is going to flop because it wasn't you from the start, and you're trying to chase that. So, we, like I said, we need a music lockout. For real, stop right. sounding these Wayno's motherfuckers gonna, for a bit. Wayno's gonna organize this by himself. Yeah, we got, nah, I'm, I'm, we, I'm gonna get some people together. We gonna lock these motherfuckers out. They gonna, gonna lock out and Wayno gonna stop all the niggas. <laughs> while, while everybody stops. <laughs> it's like everybody at Whole Foods going, going strike and Wayno in there still I'm stocking on sale, bro. I'm, like, I'm stocking on everything that's going on sale. <laughs> oh, Ak, what's your temperature on Blueface right now? Who is one of, on Blueface? Who is one of your big picks? He's someone who had a... a well, is it a mega hit? Started, a huge breakout. A huge crazy. breakout here. Where do you feel like he's at um, right now? Well, shit, I think he should be in the point of, like, really cultivating that little fan base for himself because I I, I think hits for him are, are going to be few and far in between. Mm. Like, you know, he had a couple catchy joints, but people get weary of shit really quickly. Like, trust me. Like, no matter how new some shit is, people get tired of it. Just give it a year. And right now, I think, like, I like... I like that Stop Capping song, yeah, I like the Bleed song, but they're not performing to the Tatiana level, which again, you're gonna have g g good or great songs after your breakout hit, but it's not gonna perform. I, I think he, like, same all the time. I think he should stay in a certain, certain space, and that's the problem because a lot of artists, they wanna jump all over the place. Like, I, I feel like, like, Too Short was good at that. Like, he, he had, like, the ratchet, like, Bay Area music. Mm -hmm. And he stayed within that pocket, but he always sprinkled his other shit around. Like he didn't put like a bleeder. He didn't like. I, I feel like um, Blueface should have not ten Tatianas, but you should at least stay within that realm and do your other shit within that, as opposed to like, all right, I'm gonna totally divert from this song to something else that people's not used to me. You know? Yeah, I think he kind of stay in that realm. It, it's just that like it, it's weird for him because, yo, like we really get hypnotized. After we see people on social media, you see the followers going up. And he the was definitely going hypnotized up. by Blue. He's super. That's uh, what I'm asking him. No, 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 no. He's still lit, though. He's still lit. Yeah, like, he about to go on tour. Yeah, he's, he's still very lit. Mm -hmm. The thing is, I'm judging his career like a year from now, two years from now. You get me? And when I know a song will, like, a song usually is about done, at least when I start looking at it, before it stops performing on charts, like, in nine months later. Okay. You get me? So I'm looking at what's next for him. All right. So he, he has a project coming up. We got to give one to his project. Yeah, of course. That's on with Drake. That's on with Quavo. Okay. That nigga's acting like Blue Vase. Uh, we'll no, that was, that was just Are a question. We'll like, check in at the end of, of the year. Of course they do. That was a one question. One thing I, I like, this is a humble critique. And, you know, I respect Wack 100 and I respect, like, everybody around him. But I do believe that, I don't know, like, he was going super, like, his career is based off, like, going viral and, like, kind of mixing the two. You know, I think he does in a great way where it's not like violent, where he's like trying to be for people. I just felt like that has either gotten stale or just kind of like died down for him a little bit. Mm. Like he's not going viral really a lot. And even as ridiculous as it sounds, he's a viral rapper. Like he needs that to match with the music mm -hmm. to for the music to go. It doesn't sound ridiculous. He was like a perfect part of that conversation. All right, let's see what happens. A few months left in the year. Let's look let's out see. for this project. He's gonna go on tour. Um, on to some music. Uh, Wayno's favorite, Jaden. <laughs> Just another project called Iris. Sire Backwards. Thank you for the little tutorial. 17 songs on this one. Rocky's on here. Tyler, uh, Cuddy, Willow. It's a pretty stacked uh, feature list. So this is a follow up to his 2017 album. Um, I'm gonna let you go first, Wayno, of course. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, um, okay, so. I hey, Trinidad this, James is on here, yeah, too. Yeah, Trinidad Shout James, he made, it, he made it on there. Um, th Like, with with Jaden Smith albums, like, I think uh, people can't go into it thinking that they're going to get, like, rap, right? Like, you, you can't go in there thinking, like, all right, I'm looking for him to spit bars or why do people like this shit? It's just like a, a musical feat. Like, his shit, like, he got a lot of orchestra sound and shit on there. Mm -hmm. If you're not into his shit, you're not going to, like, really be too much. You not really might may not like it, but... It's cool. It's cool. Like, I mean, I like Sire way more than I like Iris, but um, okay. it's, it's some drinks on here. It's definitely some drinks on here. 
I don't even know if we should ask academics to start. Maybe we should just go to I the to the, the Jaden fan Jayden questions. Man, stop! Don't even. Now listen to this shit. Listen, y'all 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 gonna stop really like hyping up niggas who are just trying to be sophisticated. This shit. Who <laughs> just trying to be like, sophisticated? For real, like you listen to this shit, be like, yo, bro, you doing too much. Like, no, they, that, that's why I said like this one. <laughs> like, like you know, some niggas just trying to show like, yo, I'm artistic. <laughs> Like I'm keeping it true with you, and by the way, I do think he's a great rapper. Mm -hmm. But you know, like I like I felt listening through this shit. I'm like, yo, he's trying this art, like this little artistic wave. He just want to get on <laughs> artisanal that rap. No, like uh, Tyler bodied it. Okay, he bodied it. Thank you, academic. You no, know, when I mean he bodied, he got niggas like y'all to believe it. Oh my <laughs> god, to believe but, it. Like, like, like I see Jaden Smith, and by the way, he is kind of in that space, just as how people perceive him. But his album, I was like. Come on, bro. Yo, let's pull up this fan question. You right. should be a pastor. You ever thought of starting your own church? You'd be great. People <laughs> would definitely like, follow you to the end of the this, earth. The um, hello, cast of Everyday Struggle and everyone that works there. Shout out to all our amazing people in the control room. My question today is, what do you think Jaden Smith would need to do to become one of the top guys for this new generation of rappers like Cole, Kendrick, Drake, are now? Uh, I don't even know if Jaden wants to be one of those people necessarily. I don't think so either. Um, but, um, I mean, he has his audience. Yeah, right? he has his audience. I think, like, uh... Um, well, why do you say he don't want to be... Like, again, not those names, Not but... within those names. I think I think that he wants to be... I, I think that he wants to be respected, and I think that he's uh, he is respected. Like, he he's broken out of the whole Will Smith son shit. Right. I felt like he did that with Sire. He broke out of that. But, like, his last two projects, they just have to... For me, like, the, it, Sire is what made me a fan of him as an artist. Mm -hmm. For me, they haven't lived up to Sire. You know what I mean? Like they have to rap more. That's what it is. Nah, it's not even that. I, I just think like like you said, like a, a lot of the songs, it just sounds like he's doing a lot. And he was doing the whole <laughs> fucking three in one songs before uh, Travis did it with Sicko Mode and all that. He was already doing it, but like this this time around, it's like heavy, 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 heavy on it. Like heavy on it. And I think that like he should just stick to his guns and cut it down a little bit more. You know what I mean? Like he should cut it down. And I, I not really want him to rap more. I want him to sing a little bit more. Like his his his, his singing shit is a little bit better than his rapping shit sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. I I do think he could become um, you know, one of the generation like for his generation, like one of the guys who are like the Coles or the the Drakes. Again, not comparing him directly to those rappers, but just as how they're perceived in their generation. I think, you know, w when you think about, like, how old he is, and by the way, he broke out of the biggest, like, black or dark cloud over him, which is, yo, that's the son of the nigga we care about. I think he could definitely do it. You know, I, most, most of it has to do with the music. And for me, I think, I don't know, he got to be a little bit more in the culture, bro. Like, he's kind of on that. Like, but he don't, I don't think that he wants to, that's what I'm saying. I, I don't. Yeah. I don't think he like really we, wants When we're to talking be. about these generations, like, who we, like, who's Tyler's peer in your mind? Like, Damn, like they would be in the same to... bucket with Jaden. I don't know about the age difference, but it's like, you don't think about Tyler and think about, like, Cole and Kendrick, although he's just as talented. It's just kind of, it's different. I don't know who's But Jayden. who would you, yeah. Who... Nah, Jaden, Tyler and Jaden ain't peers. Hell out of here. No, I'm saying I don't no, think said, the age. Who would you call, like, Tyler's peer? Like, I don't oh, even know oh, who Tyler? I would call. Yeah, like, yeah, who would his Tyler's peer be? Peer. I, like, mean, I mean, like, I would consider... When did he come out? Like, I, I'll go off. Like 2011, 2011 right? 2010, 2011. Hmm. But I, see, I put Tyler more in the space of like a Pharrell type talent. You know yeah, what I mean? it's that, different. Yeah, I put him in, a, 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 in like a Pharrell type talent where it's like, because he produces a lot of his music and he raps on it, but it's like, I don't really put him in a certain type of class. I don't put him in a, like a group of like people because he never did a double XL freshman. He never cared about none of that shit. Like he just was on his own wave. I feel like we're overcomplicating it just because of the type of music like Tyler is making yeah. and oh, how wow. diverse he is. But I mean, like, honestly, nigga, you're in a class with whoever kind of came out. Came out. Well, it's 2011 yeah, Rocky. freshman yeah. class. No, that doesn't count, Q. right? 100%. Yeah. That would have been me, Crit, Sci High. Wow. Kendrick, Twist, Diggy, Diggy Simmons. Simmons. <laughs> yeah. How did Who's you? On? He's on Black. -ish. Yellow Wolf, yeah. yeah. Oh, he's on there? Yeah, he's on. Mac was on there, YG, Lil B. Oh, man, they're like babies here. It's crazy. You know what's like, I always thought Diggy could have been some. Um, Rapping wise, Diggy had a good month. He had one good month in rap. I, I know he, nah, he, he, he had bars, one. Bro. No, he had a good month, yo. Diggy had bars. No, we ain't he gonna had say one it. good month. I'm, this is what I'm trying to tell you. He had, the nigga had one good month. He I, had a good freestyle. No, 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 but and the, a way, good freestyle the, way, video. the way he's making it sound is like what? he had bad ones. 
He just no, here. after that it was no, after that it was. <laughs> it was listen, a year. No, tell me. All right, I think he had. Did he have a record? Because he signed to. I think he had signed to Atlanta. Yo, he had like, like two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, first of all, he had came back and dropped like a freestyle, but like he had like a record before like he disappeared. I don't know. I think he was just going through puberty, bro. Like no cap. I'm serious. No, listen, it's a young kid. Yo, and then listen, then the ladies Boy, jumped Jesus. on him. The ladies jumped on him at that time. He was like, "Fuck this rap <laughs> shit, man." For real. Now he acting. Oh man. Oh, no. Pass the ball to JoJo Simmons. What's the problem? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So to Shout wrap up to the Jaden, Jaden thought, um, he's also doing good in the community. He's been uh, out on Skid Row giving out free vegan food, which that was, was really dope. dope. That was really dope. Um, yeah. That was. I really love dope. your restaurant. Amazing. Yeah, that was dope. Vibes. Uh, let's talk about a couple songs quick before we go. Uh, so we've had some releases. Post Malone, uh, Hitmaker. So he has a song called Goodbyes featuring Young Thug. Thoughts, gentlemen? It's very unfair. <laughs> picture that. Roger. <laughs> Yo, it's very unfair that, that Post Malone just gets to make all these hits and like. <laughs> it's, it's, just, it's just so. It's just so like, it's just. <laughs> on first, let's, I listen to this song one time. It's just a hit. Like, oh, hits, no mega misses. hit. Yeah. Like, you can just hear. Like, I think he makes rock. You know how we're, we said it's so hard to recreate, like, a hit? And hit is, it's hard to explain. It's just organic. It just goes. You know it when you hear it. <clears throat> yeah. Every time I hear a song about this thing, I'm like, fuck, another one, man. <laughs> and this is another one. And then I was really listening to this shit. I was thinking, I was like, to be honest, man, we got to take this thing out of hip-hop. And in terms of... They already this, tried that. Because, like... They sound like it's almost like a Maroon 5 with some 808s and like some drums, though. Maroon For real, yo. Five. Like, because he's just straight up singing, but he's singing on like some worldly shit. Like, the shit's just gonna pop. It's did you gonna see the, pop. Vi- the video? is crazy, too. I didn't watch it. Yeah, the video is, the video is crazy. He did like, like, kind of like this grease theme where like he gets killed at this like gang fight and then he comes back as a zombie and performs like in front of the girl he got killed in front of. It's, it's, it's ill, but like, wow. I mean, Post Malone, like I, I always felt like he should have been, once he said that he wasn't a rapper, take him out that conversation. But at the same time- Oh, we're like, really trying to take him out of rap? You guys are serious? No, I mean, I, don't, I never no, looked no, at him no. as a rapper. I never looked at him as a rapper. Like he doesn't rap mm. to me. Like okay. he doesn't rap at all. Like now he- But yeah, Maroon does he use 5, elements. that seems disrespectful. He, was a lot of, he, was, he uses a lot of hip hop elements, but I don't look at him as a rapper. Mm-hmm. And by the way, you know, salute to him. Like he's phenomenal. We met him. Like he's great. But um, one thing <laughs> I started realizing, he has a formula, but his formula doesn't seem repetitive. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Get a rapper, whether it's Twenty One Savage. He got my favorite Twenty. Thug. Yeah, one of the favorite. Young Thug killed features. it on this, by the way. Mm-hmm. Um, whether it's Quavo, like listen, just get a rapper, kind of do your thing, yeah, throw them on like the on like the third verse or something like that, and that's the single. And to be honest, it's just worked every time, and it doesn't. Every time you hear another one of his songs, you don't say, oh, he's remaking Rockstar. Oh, he's trying to get White Iris again. Or, oh, he's trying to get Wow, well, congratulations. Or, no, it just seems like every time he's coming up with some new shit. Yeah, so I just got to say, uh, he's he's amazing for having that type of creativity. Yeah. It's always nice when you don't give a song a mediocre review because we got a lot of those. Yeah. All right, what about Ross and Swiss Beats? Uh, he has his new album coming up, Port of Miami 2. The song is called Big Time. I love it. Oh. I love it. I love it. Two for two and, and, today? Uh, okay. Nah, I, I love it. And the reason why I love it is because it's like, you know, we don't always get Just Blaze tracks anymore. And, like, people try to look at that type of, you know, sound as, like, it's dead, but it's timeless. I think that, like, um, Ross, of course, we all know that Ross can rap, but he just has a knack for, like, getting on certain shit and thrashing it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But um, I love this album. I mean, I love this track. I love this track. And I think that Port of Miami 2 is going to be dope. If he's going this direction production-wise, I think he's going to be good. Mm. Uh, well, first of all, when I seen the fucking feature, I was like, no, God, no, please don't. No. And Swiss? I love Swiss. Love Swiss. But Swiss style is a little bit uh, more, more than usual, up-tempo. Doesn't match what I know Ross to do. Mm-hmm. So when I realized he was only doing that, I was like, Whew, thank you, God. You, know, <laughs> you thought just... he was going to have a verse bit? No, 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 no. I uh. thought... Like, I didn't see the production credits when I saw featuring Swizz. You know, a lot of times he Swizz, Swizz, he produces, he's, produces he does the production. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. just also the feature, right? Um, so he was just doing ad-libs, hyping raw stuff, which is cool. But salute to Just Blaze. Did an amazing job in the production. By the way, it's interesting you said that, um, like, this is the realm or route he's going with the production. Like, Ross always goes this route. Yeah, like, I was you know, saying, from like, the Maybach, type, right the Maybach music, that, that series, like, mm-hmm. this is the album-sounding... Um, production level that I expect from Rick Ross. And even though I don't think this is the strongest single, if he's going this route, I know the album cuts are gonna be great. Mm. 
and I know he's gonna have a solid album overall because Ross has never made a whack album. Every every Ross album has been at least four four out of five to me. Well, so I at least four out of five. At since you say five. this, at least Garcia Vegan wants to know. He said it feels like Ross is trying to get back to his old ways with the music he's been releasing as of late. Do you think he could have another major run with his upcoming album like he did with his first Port of Miami tape? Please stop calling stuff tapes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> hey, please stop. That was a fucking album. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it, like Axe says, I don't think that Ross makes, like, whack albums. I just think, like, you kind of rate this one over that one. It's not, I don't think there's a Ross album that we can be like, oh, nah, this nigga was tweaking. Why did he ever put this out? You know what I mean? Like, you just rate him over other ones. But, like, I never questioned Ross's ability. Like, there never was a time where I was like, oh, nah, Ross then fell off or... I, I could do without a Rick Ross album. Like we could always, we always need a Rick Ross album from time to time. So can't wait for it. Um, Ross had a, I think he had a coming to age moment during the whole thing with Fifty, two thousand eight to two thousand ten. After that, people fuck with Ross. You either fuck with him or you don't. And I think at this point in his career, he's not chasing hits in terms of singles. Like of course, like he dropped a single with Wale and he dropped this song, but he's not like it, it didn't feel like if you was going for an attempt to oh, I want to be on the charts because I want to get another run. Right. He would probably try to feature like some of the people who are buzzing a little bit more. And honestly, I don't think that's where he's going with. I think just like his last project where it was criminally underrated and slept on till, you know, like, honestly, it lived better because people kept talking about it, how good it was. Right. I, f I forgot the name of the project. Rather, rather You Than Me? Um, I think, I think it was that, that one. Yeah. Was, it? was that one? I think it's I think rather it you than me. Yeah, the last one. Yeah, that's rather you than me. Mad people said, right? was really giving that props. And to be honest, I felt like that album had legs literally because of word of mouth yeah. and because of the quality of the project. Yeah. So if, if if that's how he's been recently, why the hell would he need to go on another run? Because when I'm hearing go on another run, that means you're chasing hits and or you're chasing, you're trying to get another peak. Which yeah, I think, I mean, Ross, Ross is solidified. Like, he's solidified, you know what I mean? Like, he's solidified. I think, like, like him, a Jeezy, a Gotti, like, all those people from that time and that era that was kind of making similar music, they solidify. Like, they don't have to chase anything but do their own thing. You know, as long as they, they give us who exactly who they are, I'm always cool with it. All right, thank you, gentlemen. Yeah. It's still, so great when you enjoy the music. I still <laughs> stick by it. No album under four. Or mixtape. Ross has a great discography. That's an amazing record. All right, we'll get to the rest of these tomorrow. We got some, um, at least one XXL freestyle. Maybe we'll have another one by tomorrow. We'll see you guys. Enjoy the rest of your day. We'll see you here tomorrow on Everyday Struggle.